the remainder of this video, we're going to look at uh, perhaps the most common disorder of, of the blood, anemia. The suffix a or an means without, and emia relates to the blood, a-e-m-i-a -E in English, but the Americans leave the, the a off. Um, so anemia is a reduced ability of the blood to carry oxygen. Now oxygen is taken into the body through the lungs, the blood carries it to all the tissues of the body. But if the, if the blood is unable to carry enough oxygen for whatever reason, that is anemia. The patient is then anemic. So we're looking at anemia and we'll define it as reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. This can be caused by reduced numbers of red cells or the haemoglobin content of those red cells or there may be not enough red cells and not enough haemoglobin. The patients might be out of breath and tired and look pale but the actual diagnosis is a blood test for the amount of haemoglobin present in the blood. So haemoglobin, essential to carry the oxygen to form the oxyhemoglobin. And uh, in men, the range of haemoglobin is round about 13.5 to 18 grams per deciliter, that is grams per 100 mils of blood. And in women, it's slightly lower at 11.5 to 16. So about 13.5 to 18 for men. 11.5 to about 16 for, for women is the ranges that you would expect uh, in normal healthy individuals. The other thing that's sometimes measured is hematocrit and this is the percentage of the blood which is cells. So when you spin a specimen of uh, blood down you'll get red cells the bottom, plasma at the top, the fluid component at the top. It's actually yellowish, not blue. And the hematocrit then is that about 45% of the volume of the blood is cells and the plasma therefore occupies about 55%. So normal hematocrit, uh, about 45%. So let's think about the symptoms that we would get with anemia. Well, one of the very common ones is the patient feels tired. There's not enough oxygen getting to the muscles, so they feel tired and they feel weak. Because the muscles are relatively hypoxic, they feel weak. Now there's insufficient oxygen supply to the brain, fainting may occur. So people with anemia are more prone to faint. Because of the demands of the tissues for oxygen, when they do take exercise, they often become short of breath relatively quickly. Dizziness, headaches, insomnia, other neurological type symptoms. And anorexia and indigestion can occur as well. Anorexia and dyspepsia. Sometimes they might complain of tingling in the extremities. This might be due to the fact that the peripheral nerves are hypoxic. If there is some uh, already existing coronary heart disease, angina can be exacerbated uh, by anemia because the amount of blood that is getting through is inadequate and that inadequate blood supply is not even carrying enough oxygen. So myocardial ischemia resulting in the pain of angina pectoris. 
In women, there can be a cessation of menstrual periods, amenorrhea. Some patients complain of palpitations and awareness of the heartbeat. And again, if there is some peripheral vascular disease, peripheral vascular disease already, intermittent claudication can also be exacerbated. So symptoms that the patients may complain of in anemia. So the signs that you might see as a result of your uh, observations. The patient's skin might be uh, a pale colour than normal and the membranes, the mucous membranes, uh, might be paler. Now, the reason we're in such a lurid close-up here is that uh, if you look at my uh, uh, mucous membranes there below the eye, you can see the, the well, the colour there is not too bad actually. And in patients that are anemic, that tends to be quite uh, pale. So get used to looking at normal uh, membranes, and then you're able to compare those with patients that are anemic, because they look paler. So, pallor skin membranes. There may be a fast heart rate uh, in anemia. There may be tachycardia. If it's uh, severe, there could even be cardiac failure as a result of extra workload on the myocardium. There may be red inflamed areas at the edge of the mouth, so-called angular stromatosis, stromatitis, inflammation. And there may also be uh, glossitis, inflammation of the tongue. Let's go and think about the types of anemia. What types can occur? Well, it's classified in different ways in different texts. But uh, what I'm looking at here is uh, basically three ways that anemia can be caused. The first is secondary to decreased erythropoiesis, decreased production of red blood cells. Erythropoiesis means the production of red cells. Alternatively, the amount of red cells being produced may be normal, but there may be an increase in the breakdown of those red cells, the process of hemolysis or hemolysis. So inadequate production, increased breakdown, or the other thing is secondary to chronic blood loss. If blood is being lost all the time, say from ulcerative colitis or um, uterine fibroids or something like that, then um, production can't keep up and anemia will, will result. So let's think about the sort of agents that can be deficient in, uh, and cause anemia. And the first one we're looking at is iron. This is the most common one. Something like 80% of cases of anemia are caused by lack of iron. Iron deficiency anemia. Other things needed for erythropoiesis, vitamin B12. As we'll see in a minute, lack of vitamin B12 causes pernicious anemia. Vitamin C is also necessary for the formation of blood cells. And so is folic acid. Again, lack of folic acid can cause a pernicious type anemia. And occasionally you might, oh, I've never come across deficiency of copper, but copper is a necessary erythropoietic agent. But patients that are low on thyroxine, uh, patients that are hypothyroid, uh, may become anemic. 
So a deficiency of any of the factors that the body requires to produce red blood cells.